Well, hello everybody and welcome. We are Bob and Carla Lee, Executive Directors of the Columbus Girls Academy. And we've had the honor and privilege of working with teen girls and their families for over 20 years. We're so glad that you've joined us tonight for our unshakable virtual gala. The Bible says in Psalm 16, 8, I will keep my eyes on the Lord. With him in my right hand, I will not be shaken. That's such a good word, Hunt, for the times that we're living in. Obviously, meeting in person this year is not an option due to the pandemic, but we're excited to be able to meet with you virtually. So let me say thank you for setting aside this time to be with us tonight. You know, while the pandemic has certainly brought challenges to our usual way of life, we're grateful that here at CGA in our community, students are still attending school, receiving the support of our amazing staff, their peers, teachers, counselors on a daily basis. You might ask, what is daily life like at CGA? Well, I would describe it as a little like home away from home, a little like church, a little like Bible college, and a little like boot camp. You see, we surround our students every day with structure and love in a faith-infused environment, knowing that ultimately God is the only one who can transform the hearts. Our hope tonight is that you will get a sense of the important work we do with at-risk teens and their families, and then choose to support our efforts by becoming a sponsor. So tonight you'll have an opportunity to give online, by text, or even the old-fashioned way by calling in. Well, we have a lot of good things in store for you tonight. We're moments away from hearing from the Columbus Girls Academy Choir. They've been working so hard in their preparation. We're so proud of them. You'll also hear an amazing testimony from one of our students. Mike Lindell, the founder of My Pillow, will be our keynote speaker tonight. I think you're really gonna enjoy it. Well, like Mike always says, I know you will. Lastly, please pay close attention to the links in the description on your screen to enter the raffle and ways to donate. Thank you to all our sponsors for making the Unshakable Virtual Gala possible. And now, let's put our hands together and welcome the Columbus Girls Academy Choir. <laughs>
Wow, that song was amazing. It sure was. They did a great job. I'm so proud of them. I taught them all those moves. I'm just kidding. We want to take a moment and just share with you uh, a little bit more information about who Columbus Girls Academy is. We are a faith-based therapeutic boarding school for at-risk teen girls 12 to 17. Our students come from throughout the U.S., but predominantly here in the Southeast. And you might ask yourself, well, who are these girls and where do they come from? Well, actually, they could be your neighbor's kids, your nieces or nephews, or even your grandkids. You see, there's a very real battle for the souls of our young people today. And they're struggling. Societal, cultural pressures can be overwhelming. Family discord, trauma, and loss are often the precursors to the at-risk behavior that leads a family to seek our help. Our students at CGA focus daily on areas of personal growth through individual and group counseling, as well as our faith-based life skills curriculum. Our family weekends provide an opportunity for parents and students to work together towards reconciliation. During our family weekend, parents also attend parenting classes that provide a biblical perspective to parenting today's teens. Recently, we've expanded our counseling services to include telecounseling, for our families to actively be a part of their daughter's growth as well as their own. These telecounseling sessions are now available post-completion to help promote long-term success of each student. Through participation in regular art classes, students learn new ways to self-regulate. Art therapy also helps to reduce feelings of stress and anxiety in our students. CGA also offers an equine program where students learn to be calm assertive, and communicative using verbal and nonverbal techniques. Students discover that they are strong and capable of leading others. Our end of course surveys are given to the students and the results have been phenomenal. When the students were asked if taking part in the horsemanship program improved their confidence, over 91% of the students reported some degree of improvement in their confidence and 100% of the students reported that they learned something through taking the horsemanship course that has made them feel good about themselves. At CGA, our students serve others by participating in several local outreach programs, providing meals for the needy, outreach to inner city kids, and praying for individuals in need. Now, this is a personal passion of mine. Each year we have an outreach to a major U.S. city for our students to experience urban ministry and to cultivate love and compassion for hurting people. We also travel internationally to the country of El Salvador, where we partner with a ministry called King's Castle. It's an outreach to the children of El Salvador. There, our students gain valuable insight into the lives of those less fortunate. CGA recognizes that education is a key component to long-term success. 18 months ago, we opened up our brand new state-of-the-art education building. We've expanded from four to six classrooms with science labs and a premium technology experience. For many years, CGA had partnered with fully accredited educational providers to offer quality curriculum to our students. Now, we are pleased to announce that this year, CGA has obtained our own full accreditation through Cognia, formerly known as Advanced Ed, the highest accreditation standard possible. Since CGA opened its doors in 2001, we have served nearly 1,000 students and their families. Well, we hope tonight that through our time together, you are able to see and experience that your investment as a sponsor of CGA, it's making an impact in the next generation well, now it's my pleasure to introduce to you our featured student testimony. Please welcome Lydia. She's one of our CGA Shining Stars. Hi, my name is Lydia. I'm 17 years old. I'm from Chesapeake, Virginia, and I've been in the program for about 13 months. Growing up for me was kind of different. My mom was always at work and my dad was left staying at home with us and he was an alcoholic. So about when I was like five, they got a divorce 
And right after this happened, I developed really bad OCD. And it was to the point where when I would wash my hands, like I would wash my hands so much that they would bleed and I was just afraid of everything. And so I couldn't function like as like a normal child. And so my mom tried to put me on medicine and send me to a hospital. And while I was at the hospital, my aunt visited me all the time and she introduced me to sports. Then in the ninth grade, I got introduced to like really bad friends and I started sneaking out and um, sports kind of kept me from doing things that were like too bad. But that shortly changed when I got my third concussion and I wasn't allowed to play sports anymore. So I was needing something to do on the weekends and I just like fell into the wrong crowd. One day when I was home from a concussion, my neighbor introduced me to drugs and from that moment on I just started like just spiraling out of control and I was always drinking and smoking and just doing everything like wrong. My mom couldn't control me. The rumors at school started getting really bad and I was getting like bullied and I knew that I needed a place to go to for my 11th grade year. That was not the school that I was going to. And so I wanted to go live with my dad, but he had like just gotten out of jail. He was still an alcoholic. He was supplying me with alcohol and just places to drink. Like my mom knew that that was like not something that was okay for me to go to. I started living in my car and I was just like hiding from my mom. And I accidentally overdosed and I fell asleep for about two days. And so my grandma suggested that I come to Teen Challenge. And so on July 23rd, 2019, I came to Teen Challenge. And I thought that it was gonna be like easy because I was already a Christian and I shortly realized that was like really unrealistic. I had no understanding at all about Jesus and even though I thought I knew everything. As people started showing me like kindness and they just started being nice to me and just um, me starting to get more friends and eventually it just led me into wanting change for the people around me and wanting change for myself. And so after being here for about six months, I fully surrendered my life to Jesus for like the right reasons. The biggest thing I've learned about myself is like, because I didn't really know what it meant like when they would talk about your identity. And I think that that's the biggest thing I've learned is like actually who I am and like what like Jesus says about me and not what like everyone else says about me. And like just knowing that I'm like an actual like daughter of someone who is like perfect. And I think that was really like mind blowing to me. My relationship with my mom was like restored. She had like good intentions in everything she did. And that me being here made me like really see that. And now, I mean like we like love each other like openly and we like, we like love talking to each other. and. We like can't wait to like have a normal relationship that's like what it was meant to be. My dad found Jesus while I was in here. He got baptized and he's walking with the Lord now and um, he's being freed from like his addiction. I know that like for sure my life has like changed and I'm going to um, be pursuing like in ministry and stuff when I get out and that without coming here that like my life would never be how it is now. Hello and welcome to our 2020 Teen Challenge Southeast Gala. We're so excited to have you tonight. My name is Bryce Maddock. I'm the president and CEO of Teen Challenge of the Southeast region. And I'm excited to be able to share with you the things that are going on in our region and also to introduce our keynote speaker. This year we decided for our theme to be unshakable. In Psalm 16, David talks about fixing his eyes on God and that makes his feet remain unshakable. And that's the way we feel right now. In spite of the uncertainty going on all around us, we want to remain unshakable. And I want to say that you have helped us to remain unshakable this year. In spite of the things that are going on, the coronavirus pandemic, the um, financial uncertainty, social unrest. And on top of that, there is so many people that are anxious and depressed. There are so many people that are struggling with addictions more than ever before. And also um, there's an increase of suicide during this time. What that speaks to me is that there's so many people that are out there searching and looking for hope. And I'm thankful that Teen Challenge has been able to do that. We've been able to keep our doors open when many businesses, sad to say, have closed theirs. Many nonprofits 
have closed their doors and will never reopen. But thanks for your prayers and your financial support, you've helped us to remain unshaken during this time. You have helped us to be able to reach more men, women, boys and girls than we ever have. And I'm encouraged to share with you that this year we've been able to grow as well. We've been able to start our first intensive outpatient program. We've been able to start our Hope Counseling Network. We've been able to start um, a, another micro business, which is called Simply Clean Solutions. We've been able to um, start a new thrift store in the Orlando area. And we're very encouraged that in January 2021, we're going to be opening our seventh adolescent campus. It's now my privilege to be able to introduce our keynote speaker, Mike Lindell, who is the inventor and CEO of My Pillow. Mike has a big heart for those who are struggling with life controlling issues, as he has had a powerful story and testimony of his life and how God has transformed him. I invited Mike over a year ago to come to one of our campuses and Mike shared out of his experience, he shared out of his heart and he truly connected with our students. It was then that I knew that Mike was the real deal and that he truly had a heart for those that were struggling with life controlling problems. Mike has a brand new book entitled, What are the Odds? Crack Addict to CEO. And with your donation of $50 or more, we want to be able to give you a signed copy of this book. I know that it will encourage you. I know that it will challenge you. And I know that it will help you to see that we all serve a God who helps us every day to remain unshakable. Please enjoy Mike Lindell and thank you once again for your prayers and your generosity. Hello everyone, I'm Mike Lindell, the inventor and CEO of MyPillow. You know, my story, I guess, begins in childhood. When I was seven years old, my parents divorced and I got put uh, into another school away from my friends and uh, I was the only kid from a divorced family. And right away I had this feeling like I didn't fit in or I, um, this, uh, the devil's lie, I was unworthy and I would do things, I became kind of shy and I would do things either to show off or I, would, or I wouldn't talk to people. And, and this went through my ch childhood into my teens and I got into different addictions, uh, got compulsive gambling I, and uh, a lot of different things, alcohol around 15 or 16. But one of the things that's real significant, I got to my five-year re class reunion and I'm, I'm there and they had all graduated from college or, or, finish, or you know, uh, expanding their careers, starting families. I had dropped out of college in the first quarter and uh, I hadn't done anything. I'd worked at a drive-in movie theater and a, and a grocery store. I got home that night and I laid in bed and I had a deep sadness about me. It was like, I, can't, I can still put myself back there. I wanted what they had. By the way, in the early 80s, I got into cocaine. And when I, when I tried cocaine for the first time, I'm going, wow, I felt good inside. It masked the problem. It gave me false courage. All these things it did for me that I could be this functioning addict, and I was for a long time. But I, get, I married, uh, married in 1987, had four kids. But in the early 2000s, I got into crack cocaine, and, which is a different drug than cocaine, and just another, another addiction. And, uh, and I, you know, I started my business, you all know me as with the MyPillow in 2004. At this time, I didn't have anything left when I started MyPillow. It was turned down everywhere. I ended up doing a kiosk and doing home shows throughout the country. Well, I did, these, I did this for um, um, seven years, the home shows, but in the meantime, I had this parallel track of addiction. I lost a marriage of 20 years. I had people betraying, taking, our, taking my company, all this betrayal, but the combination was just devastating. It got to the point where um, drug dealers actually did an intervention on me in early 2008. And uh, he said, you know, you've been telling us for years, Mike, that this my pillow thing is just a platform for God. And you're going to come, you're going to quit and come back and help us all someday out of, out of addiction, this addiction world we're living in. And, and that uh, two of those guys, by the way, are born again Christians that uh, work for me now. I prayed, I said, God, I want to wake up in the morning and never have the desire again for these addictions. Well, I woke up the next day and they were gone. And they, they, they've they always, been, they've been gone ever since. It was a, that was a divine miracle. Uh, my history with Teen Challenge actually started the day that I was set free 
um, of the of the of the addictions on January 16, 2009. I'm laying on my sister's couch. I was staying with her, and I had this. It was like a daydream. I said, I told my sister, I said, I keep getting this dream, run, baby, run, like a, a Nick or something. And she goes, I think it's a book. And she looked it up, and it was Run, Baby, Run by Nikki Cruz. I, I jumped in my car, and I went down. I, I knew I had to find the book. I went down, the drove all the way to Minneapolis, the public library, and checked out the book. Here is that book. And I kept it for my archives. It's actually a copy of it in my book that I just wrote. But I got I got it home. I read it cover to cover, and I'm going, wow. With Nikki, you know, leading the Mau Maus out of, you know, the, the, the whole story, I go, maybe I'm going to be a leader that leads, you know, people out of addiction. This book, and it's, it resonated with me. I'm going, wow, there is a story behind Teen Challenge. And, and what they've done, and then I, I obviously researched them all and researched. I go, wow, this is an amazing network of help based on Jesus. And two months later, I went to this faith-based treatment center that was out of our church, and it was all these principles they were teaching of where where addiction comes from, these wounds, these father wounds and trauma. The faith-based centers work because they address the wounds that manifest into the devil's lie. I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. I don't fit in. I'm different. They were addressing these things that uh, would restore your heart and bring you to Jesus. Well, this goes all the way up to, you know, every, you know, when I wore my cross on TV and I, and I wanted that personal relationship, well, everyone, I kept sending people, my friends and stuff, sending them to Teen Challenge. I, you know, when I came down there and uh, Bryce called me up and, he, and I, you know, I pray about every place I'm supposed to go and speak and be at. We go to this one place and it's, it's for, I couldn't believe that was even exist. It was for 12 to like 17 year old girls. And I get in there and I'm telling my story and I'm going, are they even going to resonate with this? And we got done and all these girls come up and they wanted pictures. And one little girl says, can, can I give you a hug? And, I'm going, and I give her a hug. Well, then they all lined up for hugs. And what they were looking for was hope. They seen hope, even though I'm so far apart in age and addiction, whatever that is, but they see hope. And that hope is, is Jesus. It ain't me. This is all giving God the glory. People are looking for help more than ever, but they need your help to, to provide so Teen Challenge can keep providing the help and this unshakable foundation. You can be that unshakable foundation that the unshakable foundation here needs. You can be part of this, part of the most inspiring thing you can ever do, you know, and God's going to reward you. People don't necessarily reach out for um, hope or help when things are going good. So this is an opportunity here that is unprecedented. We can get more people saved and more people's hearts restored than ever before. Um, I'm telling you, you're putting your money where the best help is in history. We're all looking for hope, and that hope is Jesus. I want to thank you all, and God bless each and every one of you. Well, I know y'all were blessed by Lydia's testimony. She did a great job. We're so proud of her and God has done a mighty work in her life. Amen. We want to thank all of our guests for being with us tonight. We hope you enjoyed our presentation. It's also our hope that you've decided to help support our mission to trouble teens and their families. No worries. If you haven't given yet, there's still time to make a donation. And there's still time for the raffle tickets that'll be available for the next seven days. But before you go, our prayer for you tonight is, as the psalmist said, when I set my eyes on the Lord, he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. God bless you and thank you for joining us tonight.